Welcome to Spaceverse, your portal to cosmic adventures. Although Pluto lost its status as an official planet, that hasn't pushed it out of the spotlight in the world of astronomy. In fact, quite the opposite has happened. NASA's New Horizons mission gave us an up-close look at the icy dwarf planet, and what it revealed was nothing short of remarkable. Here's the big surprise. Mounting evidence suggests that Pluto might actually harbor conditions suitable for life. Even memory aids, like the once popular sentence, my father explains our nine planets to me every Sunday, have been rendered outdated thanks to Pluto's reclassification. Back on August 24, 2006, the number of recognized planets in our solar system was officially reduced from nine to eight when Pluto was removed from the list. So what caused this shift in status? Simply put, astronomers began discovering numerous Pluto-like objects in the distant Kuiper Belt. To avoid an ever-growing list of planets, the International Astronomical Union redefined what qualifies as a planet. For an object to earn that title, it must orbit the Sun, be nearly spherical in shape, and have cleared its orbital path of other debris. It was this final criterion that Pluto failed to meet, leading to its reclassification as a dwarf planet. And the label fits. With a diameter of only 2,376 kilometers, Pluto is over 1,000 kilometers smaller than Earth's moon. When it comes to the cold, Pluto's not shy, it's basically showing off. This icy little world is one of the coldest places in the solar system, with surface temperatures plunging to a bone-chilling minus 233 degrees Celsius, just 40 degrees above absolute zero. At first glance, that kind of extreme cold seems like a life deal breaker. After all, how could anything survive in a place that feels like a cosmic deep freezer? Or could something survive? All that thought, we'll circle back. First, let's unpack why Pluto is so ridiculously cold in the first place. It all comes down to distance. While Earth cozies up to the Sun at about 150 million kilometers, Pluto drifts way out at a mind-blowing 6 billion kilometers away. That so far, it takes Pluto 248 Earth years to complete a single lap around the Sun. Talk about a slow orbit. Now let's talk about what Pluto is actually made of. Thanks to NASA's New Horizons mission, we finally got a detailed look at this mysterious world. And here's what we found. Pluto's thin atmosphere is made up of 99% nitrogen, and its surface is covered in frozen nitrogen ice. Beneath that frosty shell lies a rocky core making up about 70% of its diameter, wrapped in a blanket of water ice. Pluto may be small, but it's not flying solo out there. This distant dwarf planet is actually part of a little cosmic crew, accompanied by at least five moons, and the standout among them is Charon. With a diameter of about 1,200 kilometers, Charon is half the size of Pluto itself. That's like having a moon that's nearly your twin. Because of this unique gravitational relationship, some astronomers believe it's more accurate to describe Pluto and Charon not as a planet and its moon, but as a binary system, two celestial bodies orbiting a common center of gravity that lies outside of either of them. It's as if they're engaged in an elegant cosmic dance, forever locked in a delicate waltz across the outer edges of our solar system. The symmetry of their motion, the way they keep perfect time with each other, has fascinated scientists since Charon's discovery. And how this remarkable partnership came to be? That's where things get even more intriguing, almost poetic, in fact. For many years, the dominant theory suggested that Charon, like many moons in our solar system, was the product of a cataclysmic event, a massive collision that tore a chunk of material from Pluto, which later coalesced into a moon. This idea made sense, given what we know about the formation of Earth's moon and others. But recent simulations and models have offered a more graceful possibility. Instead of a violent birth, Pluto and Charon may have come together in what scientists have dubbed a kiss and capture scenario. In this model, the two icy worlds might have had a close encounter early in the history of the solar system, gliding toward one another through the Kuiper Belt. Rather than smashing apart in a destructive impact, they may have gently collided, just enough to dissipate their relative motion and become gravitationally bound. Imagine two strangers in space brushing past each other, only to realize they're a perfect match. From that point on, they became inseparable, eternally circling one another in a quiet, frozen embrace at the edge of the sun's reach. 
It's a theory that brings a touch of romance to the cold, distant frontier of our solar system, and adds yet another layer of wonder to the story of Pluto and Charon. Luckily, not all encounters in deep space are that dramatic. Take NASA's New Horizons probe, for example. It made history on July 14, 2015, when it became the first spacecraft to ever visit Pluto more than 85 years after Pluto's discovery. Weighing in at just 480 kilograms, New Horizons traveled over nine years to reach Pluto after launching on January 19, 2006, back when Pluto was still officially a planet. By the time it arrived, Pluto had been demoted, but that didn't stop the mission from revealing just how fascinating this icy world truly is. Even though New Horizons has long since zipped past Pluto and is now cruising toward the edge of interstellar space, set to cross that boundary in true Voyager fashion within the next two decades, the data it sent back is still keeping scientists busy. And wow, that data has already turned some serious heads. Researchers were stunned to discover that Pluto is far from a frozen, lifeless rock. Instead, it's a world bursting with unexpected variety and activity. Let's start with the surface. Pluto isn't just a blank, lifeless sheet of ice floating in the void. It's a world full of geological surprises. Its terrain is covered in dramatic cliffs and escarpments sculpted from nitrogen ice, stretching for miles and rising sharply like the rugged, windswept coastlines of Scandinavia. These frozen formations cast long shadows under the distant sun, giving the landscape an eerie, alien beauty. Scattered across this icy wilderness are enormous blocks of methane ice, some as large as office buildings and towering as high as skyscrapers, standing like sentinels in the middle of vast plains. And it gets even wilder. Pluto is home to what scientists believe are dormant ice volcanoes, cryovolcanoes, that once erupted not with molten rock, but with slushy mixtures of water, ammonia, and other exotic ices. These aren't just little bumps on the surface either. Some of these frozen giants, like Wright Mons and Pickard Mons, rise even higher than Mount Everest and span across regions the size of entire states. Their flanks are scarred by ancient flows, hinting at a dynamic interior. To top it off, Pluto's surface is cut by canyons that run for hundreds of kilometers, some even deeper than Earth's Grand Canyon, making the entire planet feel like a frozen, fractured sculpture carved by time and cosmic forces. It's not just a dwarf planet, it's an ice-covered world with an epic story written in its surface. One of the most jaw-dropping features is the mountain range on the southern edge of Sputnik Planitia, with peaks reaching up to 3,500 meters. Scientists believe these mountains are made of solid water ice, which, under Pluto's freezing conditions, is as hard as rock. Nitrogen ice wouldn't be strong enough to form such massive structures. But here's the kicker, we still have no idea how these mountains even formed. There's no massive planetary neighbor nearby to create the kind of tectonic stress needed to shape Pluto's crust like that. It's a geological mystery wrapped in ice, waiting to be solved. Pluto, a frozen world, that might actually be habitable? When NASA's New Horizons spacecraft finally reached Pluto in July 2015, it was traveling at an astonishing speed of about 52,000 kilometers per hour fast enough to cross the United States from coast to coast in less than five minutes. This incredible velocity was necessary to make the long journey through the outer reaches of the solar system, but it came with a trade-off. The spacecraft didn't have time to enter orbit around Pluto or slow down for an extended study. Instead, it performed a rapid flyby, allowing it only a fleeting window to capture detailed images and data. As a result, New Horizons was able to closely observe just one hemisphere of the dwarf planet, the side that happened to be illuminated by the faint sunlight filtering in from nearly 5 billion kilometers away. The other side remained shrouded in darkness, untouched by the brief encounter and still waiting to be explored in detail by future missions. The other side? Completely in the shadows. But not forgotten. While the main focus at first was on the sunlit hemisphere, where the sharpest, most detailed images came from, scientists have since turned their attention to Pluto's dark side. The images captured there aren't quite as crisp, with visible features ranging from 2 to 30 kilometers in size. Still, that's 250 times better than anything we ever got from the Hubble Space Telescope. Thanks to New Horizons, we're now seeing Pluto like never before, and what we're seeing is stunning. 
These new observations have sparked an exciting possibility. Could Pluto actually support life? Believe it or not, some scientists think it's possible. There's a growing suspicion that beneath Pluto's icy crust lies a massive underground ocean, a reservoir of liquid water hidden beneath layers of frozen nitrogen and rock. And where there's liquid water, there's a chance, just a chance, that life could exist, at least in some simple form. But here's the big mystery. How could water stay liquid in a place where the surface temperature is a mind-numbing minus 233 degrees Celsius? So, how could water possibly stay liquid beneath Pluto's frozen surface? Well, there are a few interesting tricks nature has up its sleeve. For one, salts can lower water's freezing point, just like how we use salt to melt ice on roads. Then there's pressure from the layers of ice above, which also helps keep water in a liquid state. Add to that some heat generated by tidal forces, that's when gravitational tugs create internal friction, and you've got a recipe for keeping an underground ocean from freezing solid. But does this mean New Horizons dove straight into Pluto's icy crust to explore this hidden ocean? Not quite. The idea of a subsurface ocean actually comes from the study of a bizarre area called Chaotic Terrain, a wild-looking region near Sputnik Planitia, filled with twisted ridges, deep gorges, and oddly shaped plains. It looks like nature's version of abstract art. To figure out how this strange region formed, a scientist named Aidan Denton from Purdue University ran simulations of what would happen if an asteroid slammed into Pluto. The model suggested that such an impact would send shockwaves rippling through the dwarf planet, bouncing around until they meet on the opposite side, and when they do, they'd shake things up, cracking the surface and creating this chaotic landscape. And here's the catch. For that simulation to match the real landscape on Pluto, there needs to be an ocean underneath at least 150 kilometers thick. That's a pretty deep mystery. Exciting stuff, right? But hold on, there's a twist. Some scientists remain cautious. They argue that the resolution of New Horizons images isn't high enough to say for sure what we're seeing. So while the idea of an underground ocean on Pluto is super intriguing, it's still just a theory. For now. To truly know if Pluto's hidden ocean exists and whether it could harbor life, further research missions are absolutely crucial. But let's dive into what life on Pluto might look like if that underground ocean is real. If there's life in Pluto's subsurface ocean, don't expect highly intelligent civilizations swimming around. Experts believe that any life there would be microbial, tiny organisms, probably similar to the simplest forms of life on Earth. Supporting this idea are traces of water found on Pluto's neighboring hemisphere. These traces have caused a reddish discoloration, which is a clue to something exciting. A high concentration of organic molecules, the very building blocks that life needs to exist, how did these molecules get there? It's possible they were created by cosmic radiation or solar wind, which can trigger complex chemical reactions. Experiments have shown that these reddish compounds can form when water, methane, or nitrogen molecules are bombarded with radiation. And if ammonia is involved? Well, that's when things get even more interesting because it could lead to the formation of DNA and RNA bases, the fundamental components of life. One particularly exciting piece of research came from Dale Krahanka and his team, who published findings in astrobiology. They discovered evidence that the red ice on Pluto might also contain ammonia, which would further support the idea that Pluto's hidden ocean could host life. However, the scientists are careful not to claim that this proves life exists on Pluto. What they're saying is that microscopic life could survive there, given the right conditions. What we do know for sure is this. The red band of discoloration runs across Pluto's equator, which happens to be the region that receives the most sunlight and warmth. In other words, two out of three conditions on the potential life checklist are already in place. Pluto seems to have liquid water and the organic compounds needed for life, now we just need to confirm the third condition. What's still needed, however, is a stable and long-lasting energy source, one capable of maintaining these life-supporting conditions over extended periods. Without it, any potential for habitability remains uncertain and incomplete. Whether it's internal geothermal heat, radioactive decay, or some yet undiscovered mechanism, the search for this critical element continues. 
For now, we can only wait and see if Pluto, with all its mysteries, will eventually unveil this final and perhaps most crucial piece of the puzzle. And if you're curious about the cost of subscribing to our channel, don't worry, it's completely free. Just hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss any of our future videos. See you soon.